is it visible yes okay so the uh, today's topic is basically nutrition in women life cycle i will be touching little uh, about the menarch and the midlife uh, hormonal concerns but since i have taken up the case study of a perimenopausal woman so i'll be more talking about perimenopause menopause uh, uh, phase of the woman's life cycle so as all of us as dietitians we know that if we follow a proper diet there is no need of the medication if we do not follow a proper diet there is no use of the medication so we are actually the very integral part of uh, any medical treatment and i was just having a word with my uh, gynecologist dr madhura uh, my gynecologist in the sense uh, uh, she is practicing uh, in thane a leading gynecologist so uh, she mentioned to me and i felt very proud uh, when she mentioned that menopause uh, is actually a transient phase it is actually uh, not something a period which you know hampers the health permanently and if at all nutritionally uh, we take good care of a woman during this phase this natural phase we can actually celebrate so uh, we are privileged that we are dietitians and we can take care of this so with the help of instead of just putting life into the years years into the life we normally have to put life into the years with the help of three things that is ahar vihar nidra what normally we speak that is good food exercise and obviously the sleep hygiene but uh, this is not only for the sake of presentation but this is the integral part of my consultations uh, when i counsel uh, my patients so the life stages of women which are considerably uh, you know uh, supported uh, the hormonal cycle changes which keep on changing depending on the life stages of the woman and which are these life stages that is puberty pregnancy uh, lactation and the menopause so uh, in my diet opd and uh, I, obviously it it must be the experience with all of the dietitians that normally the phases like at menarch a girl is accompanied with her mother or elder sister where the main concerns are basically obesity or some delayed or irregular menses pcos which is unfortunately very common hypothyroidism acne mood swings uh, pms so these are certain group of clinical conditions where at the time of menarch the girls or the mothers approach to me uh, for their daughters perimenopause menopause it is uh, again obesity which is common along with fibroids irregular periods uh, uh, post hysterectomy and uh, not very often but yes ca uh, number also is on rise post menopause it is again obesity along with other ncds and between 30 and 45 years maybe i don't know but that hormonal concern is not unfortunately given that kind of importance where people i mean the women will think about from the nutrition point of view but yes the uh, realization is on uh, rise so what do we uh, what do we understand from the hormonal imbalance i'll just touch upon the theory part little bit and then i'll discuss about my case study so uh, hormonal imbalance is nothing something like uh, hb1c is 7 and then we say the patient is into diabetic or uh, pre diabetic if at all the levels are uh, 5.8 and 6.0 this we can actually uh, understand we can arrive at the diagnosis considering the parameters now how do we understand the patient is having hormonal imbalance this is weight gain which may be vague but yes if at all a woman is uh, in this particular uh, it may be at any life stage but between this particular period weight gain which is very common that is also without any reason fatigue which is very common muscle or joint aches this which is very common depression mood swings normally it is considered as a part of it is a you know mera nature hi waisa hai kind of thing and people i mean women feel guilty about it but there is nothing to feel guilty about it is actually the part it is a expression by the body that uh, a, a woman is going into through the Im hormonal imbalance phase a uh, heavy irregular uh, periods or uh, periods are maybe missed stopped frequent periods uh, hirsutism which is uh, unfortunately very common acne hair loss hyperpigmentation skin tags vaginal dryness night sweats these are few uh, symptoms which if at all we go through all of them we understand actually the entire body gets affected if at all hormones are not balanced 
and actually you know this uh, this uh, it's a it's a very sweet thing that the hormones talk to all of us on a regular basis on a daily basis and how do they speak they speak through aces that is appetite cravings energy and sleep so i will talk about that uh, in detail later on so basically if we understand the body's language through aces then we can accordingly we can as a dietitian as an expert dietitian for others, we can plan uh, or design a nutrition plan with the exercise plan so that these hormones can be happy. And if the hormones are happy, even a woman also is happy. So uh, basically, hormones are the powerful chemicals. And here I would go into detail into the uh, theory part as such, but they decide all the bodily functions, which is very important for all of us to know because our appetite whether it is cravings or low appetite more appetite we don't feel hungry we feel more hungry sleep patterns sometimes uh, sometimes we sleep a lot we feel drowsy or sometimes we face that the sleep, we face the sleepless nights also our response to the stress how we either we react or respond to the stress and whether we are happy and uh, or anxious the all those things are getting affected with because of the hormones so too much of any of the hormones or too little of the any of the hormones can affect our health status. And today I'll be talking mainly about two uh, hormones, which are day-to-day -day, uh, counselings. We normally use them. There is cortisol, which is also called a stress hormone or the insulin, which is a blood sugar hormone. Now they have a downstream effect on our thyroid, ovaries uh, and the sleep hormones. So the examples can be trouble falling asleep or struggle to get out of the bed or need caffeine to get just uh, going in the morning or PMS symptoms like mood swings, energy crashes. Now, when we get the students, you know, it is very, it was not very common initially, but uh, recently of late what I have been observing the young girls who come for the internship, uh, it is during uh, like immediately on day one, if at all, they are having their periods. Normally, having the periods which was not that noticeable, at least uh, out of my experience, I can mention. And so many interns have been seeing. But of late, the PMS symptoms are so common and they are so powerful and noticeable that girl has to take a leave or I have to send the girl home that, you know, it is very bad, you go home. So that kind of uh, hormonal imbalances affecting the quality of health also in the young girls also. So a story uh, of insulin and cortisol. Insulin, we know when the food gets converted to glucose, the pancreas uh, gets sensitized, the insulin is secreted. Along with the sugar, the insulin enters into the blood cell. As, uh, as far as cortisol is concerned, it leads to the increase in blood sugar, uh, blood pressure, suppress the immune system, decrease the serotonin. So something which is an uh, unhappy situation which happens inside the body. So actually why it is called as the story of the stubborn fat and why we should be knowing when we are talking about menopause, if you remember when I mentioned all the four stages of the life cycle of the woman, obesity is extremely common. So here the root cause is that the storage and release of fat both are affected by insulin and cortisol. And when these two are elevated together, it makes storing of fat easier and burning of fat harder. The insulin issue doesn't begin and end at carbs. It is not just to in increase the complex carbohydrate or reduce a simple carbohydrate. The cortisol issue doesn't begin and it end at stress. So it is not only carbohydrates and stress. It is something beyond that, which as a nutritionist, we should know so that when a patient comes to us, we go to the root cause, analyze what particular cause is causing this kind of symptoms to this particular patient and accordingly we can take a call. So chronically elevated cortisol can lead to loss of the muscle mass, uh, insulin resistance, which is very common nowadays. Fat cell deposits around the midsection, that is what we call as uh, uh, belly fat and these fat cells can actually make some more additional cortisol on their own. So that uh, you crave for high fat and high carbohydrate foods. So craving is nothing like meetha khane ka kuch meetha ho jai kind of thing. And then it is taken lightly actually. But then behind that there is a big story which is happening inside the body. So problems with both of these hormones greatly impact our thyroid system also. And that is why invariably any health checkup patient coming to us irrespective of any age the TSH levels are invariably on the higher side. So what is the connection between menstruation and nutrition? 
It is extremely normal to crave for comfort food a week before the period because of the drop in the serotonin levels and carbohydrates are used uh, for the serotonin production. So the body signals to eat them to counter the dip. So this is one of the background reason why we crave. The healthy way to counter these cravings is basically adding the additional uh, magnesium either in the form of the supplement or through the foods which are rich in magnesium. Seed cycling, I have been using regularly in my practice and has wonderful effects. I'll speak about that later on. Certain fatty acids which impact the production of prostaglandin hormone-like substances that control the contraction of the uterus. So the muscle cramp or the uh, uterine cramps which are very bad, which are intolerable for some women, we can actually uh, think about the uh, evening primrose oil or uh, other uh, omega-3 fatty acid sources so that we can take care of uh, these symptoms. That is basically in the follicular phase and the luteal phase, where in the follicular phase, the combination of flaxseed and pumpkin seed, especially in the ground form, around two tablespoons per day consumed, followed by a glass of water or any fluid, has wonderful effect along with, uh, is for the initial one to 14 days. And then from 15 to 28 days, it is a combination of, combination of sunflower seeds and sesame seeds. So that is what we normally advise as a part of the seed cycle because it involves, um, it is used to balance the female hormones like estrogen and progesterone. And these are certain hormones which can cause havoc or which can cause harmony within the body that is luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, estrogen, progesterone. And there are certain foods which are, uh, it is, it is uh, proven by the research that these foods, if included specifically during the particular phases where these hormones are low, we can actually uh, balance the hormones which are causing the havoc inside the body. So the combination of different uh, food sources, which I have just mentioned. So uh, we can achieve the physical benefits with the help of the food choices. Uh, each month, actually each month, woman experiences the predictable but the natural hormonal changes, which are common to common. Like if uh, a particular woman is experiencing one particular symptom, it may be common for her in every cycle. So each phase can directly affect the mood, thoughts and dietary choices. So if at all we can uh, we can concentrate which phase a woman is going through or which phase the woman faces the problem, our, our patient is facing the problem, accordingly we can choose the diet pattern for the patient. So first is the follicular uh, stage, that is first day of the bleeding till the day of 13, which is uh, FSH starts to rise and uh, as it is actually the estrogen dominant time of cycle where seed cycle, what I mentioned for the phytoestrogen is needed. Apart from uh, which actually these estrogen like compounds are needed to build up the uterine lining and with the rise in estrogen levels, energy will likely be high and the mood tends to be stable. And because of high estrogen levels, it is important to eat leafy vegetables and uh, cruciferous vegetables to, met to help metabolize additional estrogen. So uh, we can notice here not only inclusion of specific foods during specific, uh, specific phase, apart from that, even the, inner, the exercise pattern also has to be changed. Normally we say uh, 30 minutes, five days a week, that is 150 minutes per week but this pattern may change depending on the menstrual phase of particular woman and how that woman is expressing the hormonal imbalance so we have to be very tactful it is not only to eat this or eat that or have complex carbs or have uh, avoid simple carbs it is something beyond that uh, ovulation period that is day 14 when LH is on the rise it is actually fertile time and focus on the fiber packed vegetables dandelion there are certain herbs which are actually beneficial uh, uh, one like salt which is uh, needed for the digestion related issues or jeshti madhu which is needed for the hot flashes these all research proven herbs which have been used since ages uh, soft, uh, which is used for the uh, hormonal balance and intestinal flora maintenance, which is again, uh, many uh, women experience the bloated uh, abdomen or constipation or flatulence formation. So castor oil has the wonderful beneficial effect. So we can think about different combinations depending on the patient's or the woman's pre uh, hormonal expression and accordingly we can take a call. I do advise the usage of dry coconut piece 
with some vitamin C combination and that further actually helps in detoxification of the rising hormones in the liver. So it's like a liver detoxification. So uh, it is anyway, again, individualized. It cannot be common for all. And uh, this uh, ovulation period is basically when most women feel their best in this phase, you have often high levels of energy, confidence, creativity. So load up on protein and complex carbohydrates basically to maintain the energy. And the uh, last phase is luteal phase uh, where estrogen uh, drops and progesterone increases. Having sesame sunflower seeds, being mindful about the cravings and feel a bit lethargic because body prepares for the menstruation. So where the cravings to hit for the carbs, sugar, fatty foods is more. So we will have to train the patients about being mindful about the uh, choosing of the type of carbohydrates and the fats at this uh, particular period and focus on the B-complex vitamins, calcium, magnesium to assist progesterone production and help elevate mood swings and cramps and breast tenderness. Prioritizing eating nutrient-dense foods like root vegetables, sweet potato kind of things, which will uh, give the, which will maintain the satiety level also. So when we talk about the life stages, first is a menarche. Menarche is basically when the menstruation cycle begins. Now the age can differ from 9 to 14 and it may differ. Like uh, nowadays it is at earlier age and why the age is getting changed because it depends completely on the biology, on the nutritional status of uh, the premenstrual period, BMI of a girl and also the genetics. And normally, uh, we do think about whenever a mother accompanies her daughter, basically, you know, what, what, wherever is the missing link, we try to add as a dietitian, okay, this is sufficiently consumed, but here something uh, uh, need to be added, like in terms of the iron, calcium, vitamin B12, B6, C, E, where we can be specifically mentioning the food items so that uh, I don't uh, normally give any supplements at this age, but I do believe in addition of uh, different Different foods, uh, different combination of the foods. It's a task for a mother to make some delicious recipes out of that, but then it works. And what I have observed in my practice that nowadays the usage of microwave is too much. Maybe mother is working or, you know, the food is cooked in the morning and the reheating in the microwave or uh, wrapping the food in the silver foil or using the plastic containers, drinking water which is stored in the plastic container. So these are certain reasons what... Um, I have observed, though I, there may be research, I have not seen that, uh, but I would prefer some girls, if at all, they can take up this uh, topic for the research purpose, where, uh, why the incidence of PCOS or why the incidence of uh, other hormonal symptoms, what we saw, is on the rise at particular menarch age. So we can think about that. Then it's a, a period of cafe coffee day. So, but drinking tea coffee along with the meals, which is also unfortunately very common. Uh, initially, we used to think that a girl will drink a glass of milk and go for the school. It is a glass of tea with some chapati and all. Uh, maybe I give nuts and sprouts, but it is consumed along with tea. Then obviously the ion absorption gets affected. So certain kind of education is needed. So... What is it? It's a reality of the illusion. We, uh, when I am speaking about menopause or perimenopausal period, is actually we have to gray, age gracefully, but instead of what is visible outside, it should be from within. And that's what we are going to talk about it. Actually, youth is a gift of the nature, what I believe, but age is a work of art. And I strongly believe in that. It's a positive process. So let's see how we can go ahead with this. So, uh, live well to age well. Genes are inherited. They definitely affect the way we age. And apart from that, the other factors like stress, uh, professional, personal stress, uh, environment, uh, environmental pollution, uh, nutrition type and quality and portion of nutrition consumed uh, or the nutrients consumed, lifestyle and the immunity. All those factors do affect how we age. Where uh, one of the research was uh, when I was browsing, I found that the Mediterranean diet definitely helps in increasing the bone formation and muscle performance and reducing the oxidative stress. Obviously, the further study also is needed. So when we talk about the stages of menopause, it is actual perimenopause, which is uh, uh, maybe just uh, at, at the onset of the age of 40, 45, it can be actual menopause. Again, the age may differ and it is postmenopause. So where perimenopause is basically, it's a tra menopausal transition. 
it is a, a natural transition towards the permanent infertility which normally occurs at 40s and fluctuations in estrogen and progesterone the average length of perimenopause is on an average four years may vary a little bit here and there and the signs and symptoms noticed are irregular periods periods that are heavier or lighter than usual spot or bleed bleeding after the period hot flashes vaginal dryness urinary urgency insomnia mood swings irritability depression so a lady may not come to us directly that I am going through menopause and these are the symptoms what I am facing. If somebody coming to us with obesity and with insomnia, uh, we can even think this aspect also. So a patient came to me, uh, a 51 year old female patient who complained about the abdominal fullness, especially after eating the food and uh, uh, she gained around on an average five, uh, five kgs in the last two months uh, with emotional stability. She thought that she is uh, losing her temper very fast and which was disturbing and then uh, she was rushed to the uh, diet OPD. Uh, the USG uh, revealed that uh, she had a grade 2 fatty liver with the presence of fibroids and uh, she actually came for the weight management but then uh, obviously I could uh, relate that to the perimenopausal phase. So uh, a Maharashtrian patient and a housewife with the uh, uh, like a food habit as non-vegetarian. Okay. Her height was uh, once uh, the height is 160 centimeters and uh, when she approached to me the weight was 87.5 kgs with the BMI of 34 and uh, on 11th of February she first came to me and uh, I last saw her on 8th of April and uh, the weight was 79.9 on my last uh, her last visit to me. I'm sorry, I have not typed, so I just clicked the photograph of my OPD paper itself. So where I uh, I will first show you what was her diet recall. Okay, this was her diet recall when normally I take the diet history, uh, which specified that uh, she would have her breakfast somewhere at around 11 o'clock and specially it is ready to eat snack. Uh, uh, biscuit toast kind of thing sometimes if at all chapati is ready she may have or she may skip that and uh, twice uh, a week she would have even the outside snack and basically it was idli uh, then lunch because she would eat late her lunch was uh, late where it was a rice based meal uh, with a good portion size of rice and uh, non-veg was uh, four times a week and uh, her water intake was very less uh, than evening snacks she would sleep in the afternoon and evening snack uh, again the outside snack somewhere at seven o'clock and then the dinner uh, when the husband would come back the dinner would be late again more or less same like lunch or maybe sometimes chapati sabji the main symptom she came to me is uh, severe and frequent acidity so if at all you can notice that on day first visit it was four plus which was very noticeable and then i mentioned the second visit and normally draw the smileys so even i feel happy and the patient also feels happy so the acidity got reduced though it was not vanished when i saw her last the gas problem which is mainly a, a post meal uh, which was uh, there it got completely vanished constipation was there was completely revealed uh, she had frequent body pain uh, i will show you the parameters also which was under control tiredness was towards the evening again she could uh, come over that uh, overcome that and irregular periods because uh, she was in the perimenopausal period her uh, parameters, I normally write only abnormal parameters, good ones I don't mention. So HB uh, 9.3, HB A1C 6.1, vitamin D3 6 and uh, TSS 6.1 and HGPT 52. So I advised here what I could understand that whatever she was eating is not getting processed and where the hormonal imbalance uh, where when we sp spoke about the insulin and cortisol uh, story. So I uh, consulted her uh, for uh, going on a plant-based diet, no falling off any intermittent fasting or vegan diets, the simple plant-based diet. So I told her, let us give some time for the body to heal on its own. So something which is heavy for the digestion will keep on hold for time being and we'll take a call. This is not the permanent changes, but this for time being, we'll have to do that. So I put her on a plant-based uh, balanced diet uh, I increased her hydration level because the dryness in the body is extremely common during perimenopausal period so not only water other fluids which I have mentioned I'll just talk about that 
uh, I asked her to reduce up salt up by a pinch, uh, though she didn't have any blood pressure issues, but she was facing little bit uh, fa face swelling uh, on rising. So I tried to reduce the salt a little bit and oil whatever needed for the seasoning. Uh, she was completely inactive person. So I told her the target should be for 60 minutes walking per day. But I asked her to start with uh, 10 to 15 minutes walk, not to concentrate on what pace she is walking, how many kilometers she is covering. I just told her right now the target is to be consistent with the activity. So even if she is walking for 10 to 15 minutes, I told her it's absolutely fine. Target is 60 minutes. So even if you take entire one month also to reach that goal, we are okay with that. I don't want to hurry. But then you should be able to achieve that. Otherwise, normally on day one, out of enthusiasm, people start walking for one hour and next five days it is completely in the bed so i didn't want this to happen uh, to her and um i have mentioned in this in the latest sl uh, slide that i have no I, I have seen maybe uh i have the record that maybe more than uh, 500 patients where i have uh, uh, advised them to work on a breath workout i will speak about it in detail later on uh, so breath workout basically causes the cleansing of internal cleansing and balancing of the hormones. So it is ideally we can say so many calories, carbohydrate, protein, fat, everything we can mention. But if you will agree with me, if those macro as well as micronutrients not processed correctly, not assimilated perfectly, not utilized perfectly, there is no point in writing. So as we write patients, don't follow, it is of no use. We write patients follow, but if at all it is not the holistic approach, again, it is of no use. So this works very well. Uh, I will speak about that later on. Now, I advised her, I'm sorry, uh, I have just taken the click. So I have mentioned the product name, which normally we should not. So uh, the combination of flax pumpkin seeds, uh, two tablespoons followed by a glass of water, then some omega-3 supplement and vitamin D3 supplement. And I asked her to improve on the sleep cycle asked her to avoid the afternoon sleep maybe five ten minutes power nap it's okay but no afternoon sleep and also i asked even though she was a housewife she was undergoing a lot of stress also maybe natural unnatural but then i asked her not don't discuss on day one uh, you know patients may not directly open up so i told her you maintain a diary where you write down the list of the stressors one two three four five this is causing me stress and these are the stress busters so uh, i get stressed my son does not call me before leaving the office so just pick up the phone and i'm on my way that's it one sentence but my stress is gone i just gave her this example but i said you list down those stressors and uh so to have a complete holistic uh, approach so the diet went like this to start a day with a glass of water with one fourth inch of cinnamon cinnamon has been proven for the weight uh, management uh, uh, so i added that for her and normally uh, did not add a powder form because she already was suffering from acidity so i didn't want the concern uh, you know acidity to get aggravated so inch of one fourth inch of cinnamon which can be boiled and discarded later on uh, and the same water can be boiled with one tablespoon of coriander seed it's a kind of I always tell my patients, it's your specialized, individualized, personal green tea. So you start your day with this green tea. Then uh, breakfast, though she was not very much for breakfast and if at all she would eat, she would eat at uh, after 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock. So I specified the meal timings. I said, even though you don't feel hungry or you want to eat little quantity because I didn't want her lunch to get delayed. So uh, maybe some oats. Or maybe if at all chapati is ready, she can have that. Where chapati, where wheat can be minimum or no, and she can, uh, she is a Maharashtrian lady. So very happily she adapted to Jawar rotis. A little quantity just to start a day with, along with some probiotics or the protein source in the form of sprouts, whatever she is comfortable with. Uh, but I mentioned, I did not specify the amount of curls, but I spouse, but I told her that it should be sufficient to complement your main breakfast and it should not be to that high level that I don't feel hungry at lunchtime. That should not happen because lunch should not be skipped. 
then mid morning a fruit uh, with the dry fruit where i specified uh, i did not actually ask her to avoid any of the fruits but i normally this i tell my patients that you uh, understand more than me which fruit suits to your body i eat banana i get cold and cough so there is no problem with banana as such it is how your body is processing so select but one fruit at a time don't overload also along with the selection of any two to three types of dry fruits and uh, in the vegetables except potatoes uh, and beans can be little bit less but otherwise i allowed all the vegetables as per her selection so uh, the lunch would uh, be like this like a uh, bakri uh, she is basically a rice eater so i didn't want to skip rice completely so i said either you have bakri or you have one cup of either unpolished rice that what we call as uh, uh, lal tandoor kima hat sadi sa tandoor so it is not exactly brown rice as such but from the village she could manage because uh, when i inquired so she was okay with that and also i advised her how she can prepare a millet rice because she was uh, aware about kangani and rada so i advised that either or whatever is possible pra practical but irrespective whether rice there not there some plant based protein source some vegetables good amount of vegetables some probiotics and salads and soups whatever is practical possible and in between apart from fruit some other options which will just fill up the gap between two meals and not to fill up the stomach milk i did include because uh, she was complaining about the uh, abdominal distension and fullness but uh, here i uh, gave more preference to the psychology of food where she said she has a little cup of uh, a small cup of milk but then if she takes that she feels good and she she has been decades since childhood so i didn't want to you know break that connection and then i still continued with a cup of milk a uh, small cup of milk which is boiled with a pinch of haldi so uh, my short term goals is basically to make her feel good now i will not go into the parameters it is increase that is decrease basically she should feel good i am feeling good no digestion issues uh, and uh, she should feel happy about herself and long term obviously we have to correct the macro micronutrient deficiency along with uh, management or the planning or designing the life style in such a way so that she will uh, avoid uh, further uh, effects of um, uh, menopause uh dietary recommendations that we normally give to all the patients so where i try to incorporate foods what we discussed which will take care of her uh, uh, hormonal requirement i asked her to include uh, coconut i asked her to include uh, vitamin c rich foods and uh, concentrated foods i asked her to keep on hold for time being but uh, and obviously pickle also was a part of her diet uh, uh, for i told like we will see once the puffiness is reduced you are feeling lighter we'll see pickle i am not stopping completely if i say completely stop then patient will stop coming so it is basically acha abhi nahi we will think about it later on kind of thing so i, I advised her for the seed cycle also where my counseling now here i have not exactly this is what i counsel which i have written down here where i told her we are, what you have to earn is basically with the help of exercise attitude which is positive proper rest and good nutrition and uh, here certain now for the presentation sake i have combined with the theory part but this was counsel to my patient and that's how you saw the results were amazing so uh, what has to be done in this case where the uh, uh, periods are uh, not regular it is basically it is the acs gui uh, guide basically appetite sugar cravings energy and sleep so ask yourself this i told to her that uh, ask yourself am i having increased appetite between or after the meals am i having sugar cravings between or after the meals how is my energy between meals or immediately after eating am i falling or staying asleep easily so because symptoms between the meals are related to lower blood sugar problems and immediately after eating are related to the insulin resistance problem so when we take the diet recall this actually i had learned from uh, salome ma'am that exactly how we can uh, this is uh, counseling is important that is there but for that you have to understand the patient first and for that the history taking also is a skill so we understand what when where how and then we get the solution or the root cause in the history itself and then accordingly we can work on that then eat to your unique carb tolerance now this is also very important that this means 
uh, this means that finding out how much and what type of carbs you can eat. For example, I can eat the entire ap apple and I feel good. But when I eat sweet potato, I eat three, four bites of sweet potato. And I feel like e finishing the pot sweet potato completely. And after I finish completing the potato, I just sleep on the couch. So I immediately feel drowsy. So this is basically a uh, carb tolerance, which is uh, very unique to person. So we should be able to... Uh, understand from the patient in which category the patient actually fits in. Uh, obviously, eating 80% uh, of the appetite which patient should feel satisfied and comfortable but not overstuffing. Now, my patient was actually yeah, having a good amount of rice and then she would go to sleep in the afternoon. So, I will answer to the questions a little bit once I finish the presentation. So, uh, uh, Okay, so uh, she had the tendency that she would eat more rice and she will go off to sleep in the afternoon. So I asked her to portion the amount of cereals consumed uh, so that the hormones can be balanced and actually try taking 20 minutes to eat meal. So chewing is something which is important so that uh, that's how uh, that's about how long it takes for your hormones to tell you your body that you're full. Actually, uh, what we know the satiety hormones. So we, by the time our brain sig signals us that you stop eating, we've already overwritten. So this is something which I had to uh, teach my patient. Uh, on the craving days, uh, the selection of the good fats in the form of the seeds and nuts and the sugar foods in the form of the dates and figs with, with the specified quantity. Start a meal with two to three handful of veggies that also she mentioned that it helped her a lot that starting the meal with a good amount of vegetables in the form of either uh, salads or then she would sometimes she would have the cooked vegetables itself and at least three to four palm size of proteins which were in the form of either dal or uh, uh, sprouts or curds, whatever was okay with her. Now here, this simple breathing which I mentioned to her, this basically breathe in for four counts and exhale for six counts. Even though I, uh, I am a certified yoga trainer, but then uh, I cannot, I, I don't want to be a kind of like kidar padli or kaha pe bata diya. This what I am uh, saying because this has been experienced as well as this has been uh, the patients have been educated and getting wonderful results wonderful if at all i can share uh, certain stories it has wonderful effect so if the stress is ignored the stress factor is ignored and only diet and exercise advice to the patient still we cannot achieve the complete balance so this is something which is very important so that a person can uh, take the fight or flight mode in a positive way. Get to bed early with a pleasure book, which is very important, not with the uh, WhatsApp and Facebook. Uh, then soak up in early morning sunlight, which she followed religiously and she was really feeling uh, very happy and positive. So make eating into a uh, mindful practice. What you eat just as important when and how you eat which is also equally important. So I tried to change her meal timings in order to maintain what's known for balanced sugar, which means you are keeping your blood sugar in rather straight line. So what is good for the sugar? That means sugar is meant it is no rising or dip of the sugar level. So we should be mindful about it. Starvation, overeating, both extremes to be avoided. Sit down while eating, which is very important so that we know exactly how much healthy we are eating. Managing the inflammation also is equally important with the addition. That is why I added the omega-3 fats in her system, turmeric, uh, resveratrol, uh, uh, resveratrol also does help. I did not start the supplement for her, but uh, it also does help to manage the inflammation. And uh, this I will not go into detail. I also told her about the brain aerobics because basically the mental decline. She was uh, feeling a little guilty because she was losing her temper. So mental decline isn't an inevitable part and forgetfulness also was a part of her history. So studies show that regularly engaging in mentally stimulating activities like meditation can slow and even reverse age-related mental declines. And we know Sudoku and puzzles, so it can, it actually combines both passive and active thinking.
this this slide i loved so that is why i mentioned here uh, even though she is a housewife but still uh, i tried to create the positivity in the same work what she has been doing that is embrace your work loving your work is the most important factor in aging well work is like a play so every day is like a vacation so imagine that we are working every day so every day is a vacation and vacation can give so many positive vibes so uh, keeping the career goals on uh, uh, that track which is for us for her uh, there were no career goals as such but uh, your passion for work it may be cooking uh, or cleaning uh, it keeps you alive to feel young and vibrant no matter whatever may be a woman's age i have developed this seed booster chutney and it ch actually i get it made and i have kept it in our uh, health store also where a good amount of uh, curry leaves which uh, has uh, an anti inflammatory effect along with the seed combinations along with the nut combination like coconut and peanut and it is a side dish maybe a, a side dish in the sense maybe one or two tablespoon taken with every meal but that is actually has amazing results uh, in terms of uh, you know this patient anyway i had put her on uh, vitamin d supplementation also but has amazing uh, results from the overall vigor point of view so in conclusion as a dietitian uh, we uh, we know that healthy diets arising either by tradition or design share many common features and generally align with the who uh, for the control, prevention and control of the hormonal imbalance. Now, these healthier alternatives are higher in plant-based foods and lower in animal-based foods. Further endeavors are definitely needed to integrate these healthy dietary and lifestyle choices into the daily living to make healthy eating accessible, achievable and sustainable. And we just have to spread the smile because hormones are not the problem. They are the solution. And they can be our biggest ally in achieving biological balance and enjoying better overall health. Treat them with the respect and what they deserve and they will treat you in kind. And that's what I believe and practice. So thank you so much. What a wonderful practical based approach uh, where they impressed. And I'm sure participants are asking to share the presentation. So it yeah, really sure. means a lot. Over sure. to Salomi, ma'am, to for the comments. Then I'll take uh, the questions also. Whatever has come on the chat box, ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Vaidhi, for excellent presentation. Uh, I'm not talking about the participant, but I also learned a lot. The so participant ma definitely must have learned a lot from this presentation, and uh, uh, you are totally into it. So mm -hmm. you spoke what you are practicing. So it was not uh, something like you have prepared a presentation and also it was very lively and ongoing. So really uh, very happy and impressed for this excellent presentation. And uh, you have, I think, covered very nicely your case study. How, do, how to write from the assessment and how to link with hormones and how to uh, develop into a strategy meal plan so it was really a very nice thing and most of us uh, uh, those who practice say for the participants sake i say uh, when you look at the patient and when you assess the patient uh, simultaneously the back of your mind you should relate things and uh, then develop an mnt plan considering almost all the factors yeah and very nicely stress uh, how you have asked a patient to do handle the stress and list out the stress. Yes. So that's what is very, very important. The sleep and stress and your ACES was really very good. Your craving. And that is what uh, a, you need to look into and uh, short term goal or a long term goal. Not always just uh, concentrate on weight loss. So I think uh, very nicely. Uh, you have covered and uh, the BNA life uh, actually why we do this case study based uh, application based uh, intervention and dietetics is what all about is BNA life and uh, I think you have not uh, uh, fallen short of it and in fact made made us proud that uh, how we have taken carried it till this day 
and you have also added into it thank you so much by dehi and i think you can take uh, some questions, questions. Uh, yes, from the chat but uh, before we take the questions uh, i would like to ask you a question and yes, that is um, if i may ask uh, what about how much of calcium it will give uh, from this plant based diet uh ma'am it will uh, give a pro uh, not more than 500 to 600 mg for sure and mm. uh, the uh, calcium supplementation would be needed uh, yes. so uh, that is important because yes. that was not uh, prescribed I, I so not the perimenopausal is something we need to give a calcium yes. Yes. Uh, 800 to 1 gram that's what yes. i look at that so i think that was uh, missing and yes. uh, if we are not meeting with that uh, definitely it is we as a nutritionist <laughs> should give them so that will uh, balance even if she is going into withdrawal and the uh, uh, menopause that is really a key nutrient we are uh, looking at i think uh, rest of all magnesium and other thing you have covered and you will get it from your seeds and other uh, foods so that is uh, definitely Oh, nice and i think you wrote uh, vitamin d3 for two months so her uh, vitamin d levels are quite, quite yes. so not so no, sorry ma'am yeah. so normally what i advise two months and then when the patient comes for the follow-up it is once a month for next six months that is what i normally advise so actually the protocol uh, as per the endocrinology is 10 satchels so if it is very low, then you start with one per week for six weeks and then give four sachets every month. So this is what we follow in our endocrine OPD. So uh, just to for your uh, uh, knowledge or input. So that is what we should not miss out or you refer to a uh, orthopedic or an endocrinologist or a gynecologist who can follow this protocol. So that will be helpful. Because this the injections sachets hmm? per month, ma'am. First, you give because it's very yeah, low. Yes. So six weeks every week. Yeah. And then four sachets every month. One. So six plus four ten sachets. This hmm. is generally the protocol. So then, if it goes up, then we don't need to give any uh, injections or anything. Or you can sometimes I do give with oral. Uh, uh arcatol you know that's what we practice in our endocrine yeah not to break the injection and take give oral six lakh stat dose because it's quite low so this also can be done or because we are in endocrine opd we do that otherwise you can uh, always refer to an endocrinologist for a right management thank you very yeah, Geeta, you can yes. take the questions so very from the chat. Inputs. I think the calcium should be observed. Vitamin D3's uh, protocol in an endocrine OPD, what you follow is more proposed. So I think these inputs will really help. Uh, my question, and uh, before I ask one question from the audience is, uh, you have done seed cycling, you promote seed cycling, you mentioned a lot about it. So any uh, a quantitative approach to nutrient in seed cycling, like uh, uh, magnesium or what is the quantity which you propose because you are practicing? So, would you like to say that folic acid so much we gave or um, any kind of magnesium, any any inputs or any research done on that area? Uh, no, I do not count the other micronutrients, but when seed cycling given in the measurement of two tablespoon of crushed seeds per day, uh, over a period of uh, on an average three months, I do see a, a regular, uh, the mens is getting regularized. But uh, in detail about which micronutrient, uh, in how much quantity. I'm so it is more to... of an approximate way of looking that seeds have phytonutrients and yeah, basically phytoestrogen. That is what uh, I. And do. then you would like to propose yes. it, but no research yes. or no backing of any kind of uh, mm -hmm. numbers which are associated mm -hmm. with it. No. Uh, uh, one question from Tanvi is, uh, should jaggery be completely avoided or one small piece is allowed? 
Yeah, see, jaggery again in terms of carbohydrate, it is equivalent to other simple carbohydrates, but jaggery can be uh, allowed uh, if the person, I mean, a patient has really a sweet tooth. So, normally I avoid because I don't want that additional calories also, but I do add uh, figs or dates in the right proportion so that along with the calories, it will give some nutrients or, and the fiber also. And uh, if if the person wants to have, then uh, one p small piece of uh, uh, organic jaggery is uh, absolutely okay. Not more than that. Makes sense. I think this question is for you and ma'am also. When plant-based calcium is always subject to debate for bioavailability, if uh, Rupa Gupta is asking if ragi, foxna, sesame, if they are added, will they promote the calcium requirement or you still have to supplement? I think uh, ma'am also can comment on it. I think we need to supplement. This is a perimenopause, menopause. I don't think we should take a chance. We should supplement at least 500 uh, milligram daily uh, supplementation because uh, we all know that the availability because of the phytates and other anti-nutrient uh, factors in present in the foods which we are uh, talking about as calcium rich. So we will not meet the 800 to 1 gram and which is I think necessary and once it is menopause it goes requirement as a 1800 so we are quite behind so I think we should be and the, uh, looking at the other perspective of uh, cardiac or calcification or calcium deposition uh, in opinion of uh, those uh, experts, they also say that 500 is best to be supplemented and remaining should come from your food. So, ma'am, which supplements do you recommend? Like, is it calcium uh, citrate or calcium carbonate? Because that's also one of the question. Calcium carbonate is definitely is the one which is a, uh, prescribed all over and uh, not very expensive. But then, if there is any problem with calcium carbonate, you can go for a calcium malate or uh, any other. Some doctors go for a milk calcium. So these are also the options because you are, don't want uh, other calcium supplements. So it's up, so up to your patient and uh, uh, the symptoms like constipation or any other problem coming, you can change the supplements, Tricale or whatever it is. There are so many available now, better absorbed uh, supplements. There are, uh, you know, natural extracts also are available. Correct. Okay, so uh, this... There's a question saying uh, from uh, um, uh, Sindhujas that diabetes can use coconut sugar. So, any inputs on that? Why they have you used that coconut sugar? Uh, uh -huh. Because you had mentioned regularly coconut in here because I think MCTs and uh, some good fatty acids in it. So, so, coconut can be the part of the regular meal, but coconut sugar, see. Uh, Coconut sugar is definitely better than the crystallized sugar for sure. But uh, uh, what we have been talking about this artificial sweetness and all, wherever a patient is diabetic, where when the patient is insulin resistance, any kind of uh, uh, carbohydrates which can lead to the immediate rise in the blood sugar is definitely not advisable in long run because that is also, even though it is a good sugar, that is considered as sugar only or interpreted as sugar by the insulin and the response gets affected. That is what, what I strongly believe. So, uh, stop this, use that sugar is something which I normally do not practice. It is, if at all the sugar or sweet tooth is there, use some natural sources like uh, figs and dates and fruits, but not all those things. Because I have not uh, any time heard about this coconut sugar and I believe coconut have very small amount of carbs. So how a sugar is made from coconut? Uh, Nowadays, we get so many products from coconut. Huh. Uh, you sugar is one thing which I have never heard. So yeah. It's sugar but the sugar is sugar. Market. So I would not use it if the patient is diabetic Same or even for a weight loss. Why give sugar calorie when we are restricting uh, I don't think we should use. I think we'll take a last question and then we will definitely close. Does soya bean in different forms play in har play role in hormonal imbalance? So any inputs on soya bean, menopause, you've discussed phytoestrogens. So any, any inputs on that? So soya bean definitely has the uh, role to play 
But again, if the patient is not used to having anything suddenly mixing soybean flour with some different flours, uh, I mean, uh, see, we are uh, adding millets here, we are adding soya flour, we are adding sattu flour for the calcium. So uh, finally, we may not understand to what flour, how the patient is responding. So I do not uh, advise this uh, soybean chunks and the granules because they are the modified textured proteins, which I normally do not advise. Soybean can be used in the flour form, but if at all not used to, to be added at the slower uh, rate and uh, uh, otherwise in the soya, uh, gra not granules, the soya grain as such can be soaked and co cooked as a... Uh, uh, in the uh, what is that called pulse form usar form so that can be added and definitely it has phytoestrogen it is actually beneficial but right processing is something which is important as it goes with the millets also so adequate soaking and slow cooking is something which is mandatory so that it will be beneficial from the hormones point of view that is what i believe yeah. And Saramiyam, would you like to say something because the next the question follows should be restricted. How about tofu? So I think processed soya. Can so be soya allowed. bean, yes, of course, you cannot use it as it is because of the uh, anti-nutrient factor and, and also the estrogen activity. So we need to process it and it says uh, the NIN had a... Uh, uh, I think come out with an article which says you must uh, roast it at 160 degree temperature for 15 minutes if you want to use the soya bean as it is. So that's called processing at home. Otherwise, you must use the processed flour or others. Even so, so soaking and drying and then uh, heating. So this is a long process uh, uh, involved. So that's for uh, we should be careful. And uh, you want to use with isoflavones. So you do get uh, soya, I mean isoflavones with uh, processed soya burn also. So we as a nutritionist want to incorporate soya bean for isoflavin for periponopause and menopause. So that is what we must tell not to add it in flour as it is. So process it at home or buy the soya flour which is processed and then add it. That's what I would always uh, uh, recommend to all my patients. And the questions Gita, continue. you want to add? No, ma'am. Thank you. I think it, it says it all. And the questions continue. There are a lot of questions. Um, should we take it or ma'am, should we... Uh... Uh, if that is of... important, you can say. Uh, no, Chinese the question is like, how about Korean Chinese cuisine, which use it's soy processed. sauce? And... It's processed yeah. for them, yes. And one, one question about Garcinia, 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 Cambodia, would you advise for weight loss? How does it help in weight loss plateaus? It depends. Exactly. Uh, whether you want to use it, whether it is needed for that. A or B or C, whichever patient, based on your assessment. And, uh, of course, Garcinia Cambodia is a proven uh, uh, thing for also. weight loss. But you must know the amount, uh, how much to be prescribed and how you are going to use it. And uh, what is the, uh, you know, uh, acceptance of the patient. Agreed. So, I think this is what the BNA life is all about, giving practical approaches towards the um, case study is what we are looking at. And these presentations are available, what we've just drawn uh, live on the website. Do visit, like the page, uh, the Facebook, the Insta. So BNA Life is very much in the social media and you can always post all these practical questions there. We, were one, we would be very happy to connect to you. I think Salomi Ma'am's inputs really make a lot of difference. And when experts come here, they have their own way of looking at it. So, Vaidhi, your session was excellent because you, you spoke so much about practical application, which talked about insulin cortisol, which a dietitian should know. You talked about seed cycle. You made us understand that how important it is to know the, uh, uh, the metabolism behind the scene about various phases in your menopause, in your menstruation, in your menarche. So, it was very much scientific and that is how a dietitian should look at the approach and the ACEs. And the way you have depicted the recalls in your the OPDs, which you do it, I think that's something which each one of us should look at the take back home message. Where beautiful way of like taking a screen screening of the patients from A, B, C, D, what we discussed. 
uh, that was very good. The smileys which you showed was very impressive. So I think this is a lot to learn from you as 30 years of practice says it all from you. And we are very happy. We we'll definitely call you again to discuss any other case studies. And when we know that women nutrition is what you are keen on, and we will definitely have you once for one panel discussions on some case studies as a part of, because I think discussion is what keeps this session alive. And sure. ma'am always feels that more less talking and more discussion is important. And I think we will keep keep that in mind and we look forward for your inputs from, for more because the whole year we're looking on new woman nutrition. And uh, we'll keep that in mind about your approach towards it. And thank you very much for taking out time for the session. We are really, really uh, happy and thank you to you. The PPT definitely is there. I mean, people are asking for PPT. The session will be is recorded and it will be live on the website. Please do visit BNA Life website. YouTube Thank you very also, much. I think. We'll have yeah. it on YouTube also, no? Yeah, and YouTube. So they can the refer website. it. Yes, yeah. Facebook. Those are prescription sheets. I must really congratulate you by this. How and you are put symptoms and, you know, the follow up and everything. I think all the participants should learn that. Correct. So there's so much to learn from this. Exactly. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all those who have joined it as participants. I'm sure you all look forward for every session of BNA Life and we look forward to get you the best of experts to this platform. Uh, we're missing Nazneen Hussain and Richard today because they are definitely a part of a team who, who, who help us facilitate and get together all the concepts to you. And the Back up, we, we do not want to miss out Mr. Gandhi and team. Thank you very much. You've always been support to us when we facilitated. Last word from Salomi, ma'am, and when we uh, close the session. Thank you very much. Over to you, Salomi, ma'am. Thank you, Geeta, for that excellent moderation. And uh, I have no words to thank Vedihi. She really uh, fitted into BNA life. <laughs> because what we want to do it as BNA Life with case studies and uh, definitely uh, you are 100%. So and we welcome you, so you and we will look forward to have you again for uh, different case studies for young girls or a menarch or whatever uh, your area of expertise. We will definitely have My you. Pleasure, ma'am. So thank you and uh, Vaidehi very much. And thank you participants for your active participation and so many questions we are always there to answer your questions you can mail us uh, or you can uh, put your questions in bna life uh, website and uh, above all geeta you always take the session into a different level so thank you so much yes uh, the mr gandhi and team we thank you Zaka and adwait those who are at the back end uh, and we would uh, end this session here Thank you. Thank, Thank you very me. much. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank you.